Hello, I'm Dr. Inman. This is another lecture, miniature lecture, on endocrine disease in canine. This is about Addison's disease. Addison's disease is hypoadrenal corticosteroidism, exactly the opposite of Cushing's disease. Cushing's disease, hyperadrenal corticosteroidism. This is a condition where the body is actually not producing enough uh, adrenal cortical hormones to basically function correctly. And these animals can be in big trouble, essentially. They can come in with diarrhea and gas, et cetera, et cetera. And if they're not given a great, great big blast of corticosteroids like dexamethasone, they can die overnight. So they can be an emergency type situation. I speak out of, out of experience because uh, essentially, uh, when in doubt, we blast them with a corticosteroid and then we run the blood test and find out what the heck they have. In the meantime, we have... Uh, and, and, and this is now 2016, for the last almost 10 years been trying to resolve Cush or Addison's disease essentially in the canine with very little results until we finally said, oh, what the heck, let's just use the same frequencies that we use to treat the adrenal cortical insufficiency or a problem of communication that we see in Cushing's disease. We use the Cushing's frequencies for the pituitary, the adrenal, and also the colon for the exact opposite disease process. Maybe that would work. Well, we didn't have a whole lot of Addison's disease animals um, for the last 10 years to treat necessarily in this regard. And also the people that treat them have to have a three-headed laser and also have to have training on how it is that they can apply this technology. In other words, they've taken my course. We've only trained about 800 veterinarians in the United States with this technology at this point. So when we treat Addison's disease, we were able to accumulate enough of them and starting to get some good results, good enough results for us to provide this as a therapy. We use the exact same frequencies that we use for Cushing's disease to treat Addison's disease, essentially. So we will use a frequency for the pituitary, a frequency for the adrenal, and also a frequency for the colon that includes the chaos conversion factor for the colon for the third body, essentially, and that is the key. So that which basically messes up the adrenal cortical access, the pituitary cortical access, um, pituitary adrenal access rather that causes Cushing's disease hyperadrenal corticosteroidism also can compromise that communication and basically shut down that access of communication producing hypoadrenal corticosteroidism or Addison's disease so our approach is uh, exactly the same and all of that we evaluate it in the same fashion all that time however we may have this animal on a bit of corticosteroid prednisone or dexamethasone as a corticoid to make sure the animal doesn't go into a stress situation or flop over dead Cushing's disease they go and they, they waste away getting fatter and fatter and fatter and die of some other kinds of related conditions. But, but Addison's disease, if left unchecked, will take the animal's life sometimes overnight. So we would recommend that you very, be very careful with these animals, essentially. Well, this technique over a period of maybe 20, uh, 20 laserings in six months can, can restore this pituitary adrenal axis to a relatively normal, if not normal, rate essentially. Its success rate is about 75 to 80 percent essentially and that means that about 20 percent of these uh, animals are, infantil are not going to respond to this kind of therapy and we have to have them on mineralo and glucocorticoids which they would have to be on ordinarily. The problem is when they're on glucocorticoids and mineralocorticoids when we start, start, start this therapy our trick is to try to wean them off of that medication while running blood tests and doing laser activity. So it's kind of a dance if you will for us to actually solve this problem. And it's not as complicated as it sounds, but it can be time consuming. It can take anywhere from two and a half to four months for us to get these animals straightened out. And we see the client quite a little bit, probably about 10 or 15 times. This has been a lecture on Addison's disease. I'd have you go to the website, vomtech.com. We'll give you more information on how to do it, why to do it, why it works, etc., etc. And we give you that information for free. I would be encouraged if you would look into the advanced laser courses where we go into this and about 2,700 other disease conditions that we've mapped out for use with frequency specific laser therapy. A reminder you cannot treat these conditions with a class 4 laser. You cannot treat these conditions with a class 3B laser. You cannot treat these conditions unless you have a frequency specific laser that fires no more than seven and a half milliwatts and it has to be firing at about 635 nanometers otherwise it won't go through the tissue. That's why we use a low power frequency laser that based on the water molecules uh, wavelength essentially so when we laser any part of the animal it moves through the water of the body. Essentially. 
whoops, ran out of power and had to restart. Talking about how the uh, laser activity at 635 nanometer moves through the body's water molecule and allows per per penetration completely. We can use a laser like this, essentially, that has no problems with shining it in the eye, etc., etc. It doesn't cause any heat, and we can actually laser the adrenal glands of an elephant. And uh, we can do it from this far away. We don't have to have it right on the tissue. We don't burn the tissue, et cetera, et cetera. Again, you can't do that with class 4 laser. Class 4 lasers will not direct itself to healings of these disease conditions. This has been a lecture on um, hypoadrenal corticosteroidism or Addison's disease. Essentially, I'm Dr. William Inman. Thank you, and have a great day.